Hello everybody, and welcome to my 30 different tips and tricks video for doing Slayer on a 1 defense peer. All of the tips in this video are things that I've learned throughout my journey of getting 99 Slayer on my 1 defense peer. Hopefully, some of the tips in this video will help you throughout your Slayer grind as well. The tips in this video are geared towards those peers that are under 85 combat and they can't use a Slayer Helmet or the Neve Slayer Master. However, anyone can actually benefit from these tips in this video. My goal for this video is to help you learn how to complete tasks faster, to help you be more efficient at doing tasks, to help you be able to make money while you're doing Slayer, to help you learn new safe spots so you're not wasting your own supplies, and to help save you some sanity because some of these Slayer tasks that you have to do just completely suck. With all that being said, let's get to it. Starting off with tip number one, for a faster return to the Childer Slayer Master that's located in Xenaris, instead of running from Lumbridge or running from Drainer Village, you can use the Ring of the Elements and teleport to the Water Altar. The water altar is just outside of the old shack that you have to enter to be able to get down into Xenaris. Tip number two, for a faster return to the Konar Slayer Master, instead of running from the farming guild, you can use a battlefront teleport which takes you just right outside of Mount Curlum where the agility shortcut is. You can also use a battlefront teleport portal inside of your POH as well. Tip number three, if you use the Fremnik Slayer dungeon for a Karas task, there is a ranging safe spot in the northwest corner of the northern Karas group. Tip number four, if you have a Kelphite task and you hate doing Kelphites like myself, and you want to get the task done very quickly, this is where you'd want to set up your cannon. This spot with a cannon and an expeditious bracelet makes this task go by extremely fast. This square is located three tiles south when you're one square west of this rock. All you need to do is sit under your cannon with auto retaliate on, and the cannon will shoot all the calphites in the room. Since I already have the KQ pet and 99 Slayer, I have no need to do calphites, so this method makes the calphite task fly by. What also makes this spot so good is that the cannon will shoot the calphites down the west corridor and the south corridor as well. Now if you get a Konar task to kill Kelphites in the Kelphite only cave, and you still want to complete this task really fast, all you need to do is set up a cannon somewhere near the middle of the eastern Kelphite worker room, and stand under it with a Venator bow and an Expeditious bracelet on with Auto Retaliate on. If you do this, you'll literally complete your Kelphite task in a few minutes in this spot. Tip number 5. If you have a Dagonoth task, you can use a Venator bow with Thralls down in the Catacombs of Karen for quick XP. You also have the chance to get Ancient Shards here, along with Dark Totem pieces for Skatizo. Tip number 6. If you ever assign a Slayer task that you don't want to do, you can come to the Turiel Slayer Master located in Berthrop and skip the task if you don't have any points to skip with. However, if you choose to do this, it will reset your non-Wilderness Slayer streak, but it will not affect your Wilderness streak. I only recommend doing this if you're trying to get assigned certain tasks. Tip number 7. If you have a Pyrofiend task, you can use a cannon to kill the Pyrofiends located on the northern side of the island on the Isle of Souls. This is the best spot to use a cannon to help you complete the Pyrofiend task. This spot also has Pyrolords, which are considered to be Pyrofiends. These give more XP per kill and are just as easy to kill. Tip number 8. While on a Kraken task, instead of shooting the tentacles to wake up the Kraken, you can just use a fishing explosive on the Whirlpool to wake them up. Tip number 9. If you have a Dust Devil task, you can burst or barrage the Dust Devils down in the Catacombs of Karend. You can stack the Dust Devils on both the northwest and southeast corner. The easiest way to stack them is to shoot them with a blowpipe or throw darts or knives at them. After you've tagged them all, all you need to do is click back and forth on one of the corners until they all stack on each other. Once they stack on each other, you can mage them down. You also have a chance of getting ancient shards and dark totem pieces here. Tip number 10. If you're ever assigned a Tazar task that you don't feel like doing, you can actually skip this task for free by choosing to kill one of the bosses, Jad or Zuck, instead of killing the Tazar people. After you select the boss task, all you need to do is walk into the cave and out of it, or die inside and you will essentially fail the task. This will allow you to get another task for free. This way ensures that you don't have to use any points to skip the task or lose your current streak by resetting it with Turiel. Tip number 11. You can stack the blood belts down inside the Catacombs of Karen. To be able to do this, you will need two alt accounts that can dance with each other. The two alt accounts will need to dance with each other in the southern side of the northern blood belt room inside the catacombs. Once the alts are dancing with each other, you can tag all the blood belts in the room and stand directly south of the alts. I am not sure why this works, but the dancing from the alts causes the blood belts to stack on each other. Once the blood belts finish stacking, you can go ahead and mage them down. Tip number 12. Another way to do the blood belt task pretty quickly is to use a venator bow with thralls down inside the catacombs of Karen. Tip number 13. If you have a fire giant task, you can use a venator bow with thralls down inside the catacombs of Karen for quick slayer XP. You also have the chance to get ancient shards here and dark totem pieces. Tip number 14. If you have a hellhound task, you can use a venator bow and thralls inside the catacombs of Karen for quick slayer XP. This will also give you a chance for ancient shards and dark totem pieces. Tip number 15. You can stack all of the Abbey Demons inside of the Catacombs of Karen. To do this, you will need two alt accounts that can dance with each other. In order for this to work, the alt accounts have to dance in a very specific pattern. The first thing you'll need to do is mark these three tiles. After you mark these tiles, you'll take your two alt accounts and walk the path of the tiles once fully. After you complete your first lap and start doing your second, you'll need to take your first alt and be ready to follow your second alt once your second alt walks over the middle tile. If you did it correctly, the alts will dance with each other like this. 
After you get the alts dancing correctly, you just have to tag all the demons in both rooms and try to stay in the center of the three tiles. The dancing alts will pull the demons into the middle of the corridor, allowing you to continuously barrage them. Sometimes the abbey demons will teleport you out of the square, so you have to just walk back into it. This spot also gives you a good chance for ancient shards and dark totem pieces. Tip number 16. Another way to do an abyssal demon task effectively is to use a venator bow with thralls inside the catacombs for quick slayer xp. Tip number 17. If you have a necril task, you can burst or barrage the necrils down inside the catacombs of Kren. You can stack the necrils on the northeast corner in either necril room. The easiest way to stack them is to shoot them with a blowpipe, throw darts or knives at them, or shoot them with a venator bow. After you've tagged them all, all you need to do is click back and forth in the corner until they stack on each other. Once they stack on each other, you can mage them down. You also have a chance of getting ancient shards and dark totem pieces here. Alternatively, if you're lazy, you can bring an ult with a venator bow to shoot the necrils for you. This way makes it so you don't have to move the account that's maging, meaning you can continuously burst or barrage non-stop until the task is complete. This is also an effective way to get a lot of magic XP. Tip number 18, zombies. If you're using Turiel to skip tasks you don't like, and you are assigned zombies from him, this is the spot to kill them. These zombies are located in the basement of the magic guild. Using a blowpipe combined with the expeditious bracelet will make this task take less than a minute so you can try to get another task that you actually want to do. Tip number 19, scorpions. This tip is geared towards those lower level combat peers or iron peers that are just starting to do Slayer. If you are assigned a scorpion task, you can actually safe spot them in this tile that I have marked inside the Elkarid mine. As long as you are over 28 combat, the scorpions won't be aggressive towards you. As you can see, I have the scorpions safe spotted to the north, east, and west. Tip number 20, dogs. This tip is also geared towards those lower level combat peers or iron peers that are just starting to do Slayer. If you are assigned a dog task, you can kill the dogs through the fence on the northern side of McGruber Woods. This method is a bit slower XP wise as compared to some of the other methods to do dog tasks, however it is 100% safe as long as you don't enter inside the woods. Use your better judgement on that if you decide to go in and pick up your bolts or anything that's left on the ground. Tip number 21, Giant Bats. This tip is also geared towards those lower level combat peers or iron peers that are just starting to do Slayer. If you're assigned a bat task, there is a safe spot where you can kill the giant bats inside of the Taverly Dungeon. Here's the entrance to the Taverly Dungeon. All you need to do is stand on this tile that I have marked next to these bones and the bats can't hit you. Tip number 22. If you have a werewolf task, you can safe spot them in Canifis by standing behind the rock or the light post in the center of the town. In this spot, you can safe spot the werewolves from all directions. Tip number 23. If you get a banshee task, you can come to the catacombs of Karen and kill the twisted banshees instead of killing the banshees inside the slayer tower. This spot is really good because you can safe spot the twisted banshees and use an imbued solve amulet here to do 20% increased damage to them, making the task go by even faster. If you're low level, this is an easy spot to train ranger mage and make money at. The Twisted Banshees drop a lot of good alkable items and also give you 100 Slayer XP per kill. This spot is also good because the Banshees drop a lot of herbs so you can get your herb lore level up. Especially if you're an Iron Peer, you can get a lot of good herbs here that you can use later in the game, so I recommend that you bring along a herb sack with you if you have it. You also have a chance to get Ancient Shards and Dark Totem pieces here for Skatizo. To get to the Twisted Banshees, when you enter the Catacombs, head south into the Ghost Room, run west, and then immediately run south into the Cyclops Room and enter the crevice in the wall. When you go down below and land in the Anchor Room, run directly west and you'll be in the Twisted Banshee Room. Tip number 24. If you get a Revenant task, you can safe spot the level 126 Revenant Knight in 39 Wilderness. To do this, all you need to do is hit the Revenant Knight and drag him east. Once you hit him, you'll need to run behind this Stagomite until the Knight gets stuck on the other side of it. Once the Knight walks to the other side of the Stagomite, you'll move to this square and wait for him to hit you once, and then move to this square and he'll be lured and won't hit you after that. Most of the time he'll just sit in this corner once he's lured, and some other times he may just walk around in this general area, but he'll still be lured. I also recommend that you turn on your PK Skull Prevention on in this spot as people will try to Skull Trick you here. I also recommend bringing a Looting Bag with you as you'll get a lot of good alkable items. Tip number 25. You can burst or barrage the Jelly Wilderness task that's assigned from Castilia. In the Wilderness Slayer Cave, you can stack the jellies in the cave on the north side of the jelly room using the Stagomite. The easiest way to stack them is to shoot them with a blowpipe or throw darts or knives at them and click back and forth until they stack on each other. Once they stack on each other, you can mage them down. You also have a chance of getting Laren's Keys, Noted Wilderness Bags, Blighted Mage Sacks, and Trover Parchments here. The really OP thing about this spot is the jellies will drop blighted ice sacks for you, so if you're bursting or barraging with ice sacks, you really aren't using any supplies doing this task. Jellies also drop a lot of alkable items, so I recommend bringing a looting bag along with you so you can elk them later. When you're doing this task, you should turn your PK skull prevention on so you don't accidentally get skulled. Since this spot is located under 30 wilderness, you can teleport out with a ring of wealth or a glory ammy if a PKer comes. Tip number 26. Ducks. If you're using Turio to skip task, and he assigns you a task to kill birds, you can just kill ducks with the Expeditious Bracelet. The fastest way to do this is to teleport with your Chronicle to the Champion's Guild and shoot the ducks in the river behind the building with a bow. You can also kill the ducks in the Lumberage River if you so choose to. 
Doing either of these methods will take about two minutes to complete the task. So it's a pretty easy and fast way for you to complete this task so that you can try and go get another Slayer test that you actually want to do from a different Slayer Master. Tip number 27. If you have a jelly task, you can burst or barrage the jellies down inside the catacombs of Karen. You can stack the jellies on the northwest corner of the most eastern jelly room. The easiest way to stack them is to shoot them with a blowpipe or throw darts or knives at them. After you've tagged them, all you need to do is click back and forth in the corner until they stack on each other. Once they stack on each other, you can mage them down. You also have a chance of getting ancient shards and dark totem pieces here. Tip number 28. You can safe spot the deviant specters down inside the catacombs of Karen. There are two safe spots you can use in the southwestern deviant specter room. The yellow marked tiles are where you'll need to stand, and the blue marked tiles are where the deviant specters will get lured to, depending on which safe spot you're using. This is the primary safe spot of the two. When you shoot the deviant specters to the south, they will get caught on this blue tile, allowing you to range them down freely with no need to use protect from magic. This is the secondary safe spot you'll want to use in the event the deviant specters are more north. You'll shoot the specter and run west to this yellow tile that I have marked. The specter will get stuck on this blue square, allowing you to range it down freely. The best way to kill the Deviant Spectres is to use an Imbued Solve Amulet along with a T-Bow if you can afford it. The T-Bow hits really hard on the Spectres because they have high magic attack. I also recommend bringing a Herb Sack along with you when you do this task because of the huge amount of herbs they drop. Tip number 29. If you have an Anku task, you can burst or barrage the Ankus down in the Catacombs of Karen. You can stack the Ankus on the southeast corner in the Anku room. The easiest way to stack them is to shoot them with a blowpipe, throw darts or knives at them, or shoot them with a Venator Bow. After you've tagged them all, all you need to do is click back and forth in the corner until they stack at each other. Once they stack on each other, you can mage them down. You also have a chance of getting ancient shards here and dark totem pieces. Tip number 30, Expeditious and Slaughter Bracelets. I probably should have started the video with this tip, but it is what it is. Expeditious bracelets are very helpful to use and will help save your sanity on tasks you don't want to do or don't feel like doing. When you kill a monster with an Expeditious bracelet equipped, it has a chance for that kill to count as two, meaning it will help you complete the task faster. Slaughter bracelets are helpful when you're doing a task that make money, or stackable tasks such as Dust Devils, or tasks that you have a chance to get a pet from such as Thermi, Kraken, or Cerberus. When you kill a monster with a slaughter bracelet equipped, it has a chance to make that kill not count at all, meaning you'll get more total kills than the original assignment amount of the task. And this was 30 of my tips and tricks that I have for doing one defense peer slayer. If you guys enjoyed this video and found some of the tips helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you guys want me to do a part 2 to this video, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what challenges you guys are facing while doing slayer on a one defense peer, and maybe I can help you out. And as always, thank you for watching, good luck on your slayer grind, and I'll see you in the next video.